Hello everybody, today let's uh, discuss about the topic Montegia fracture. Okay, Montegia fracture. It's seen in the elbow. Okay, see, whenever you discuss trauma, I believe that it's quite simple if you remember these few things B, M, C, C, R, T, C. So this is the memory aid to frame the answer whenever you are asked about the trauma series. Okay, so it's D M double C R T C. D for definition, M for mechanism of injury, C for uh, the clinic, uh, the classification, and then the other C is for the clinical features, and then R for radiograph, and then T for the treatment, and C for the complication. So this is what is expected, the basic thing. On beyond this, you can add on to this. So it's, it will be quite simple if we remember this set of thing D M double C R T C. Okay, I repeat D M double C R T C. Just fix it in your mind whenever you are asked about the trauma. For example, you find uh, for example, you are asked about to write about the fracture of the distal uh, end of the radius, or fracture of the ulna, fracture of the neck of the femur. Whenever it's asked, you have to frame the answer in the following headings. Definition D M double C R T C D for definition and then M for mechanism of injury C for the classification and then the other C for the clinical features and then R for the radiography T for the treatment and then another C for the complication. Okay, so let's uh, begin with each one. First one is the definition. What does the definition say? What is Montegia fracture? Montegia fracture is the fracture of the proximal third of the ulna with dislocation of the head of the radius. Okay, I repeat. Consider this is the uh, radius. This is the ulna. Here is the humerus. So what happens is there is fracture of the proximal third of the ulna. Okay, this is ulna and this is radius. Consider this. And then there is fracture of the proximal third of the ulna with dislocation of the head of the radius. So this is the head of the radius. So it comes up or it goes posteriorly, laterally. So the definition is fracture of the proximal third of the ulna with dislocation of the head of the radius. That there goes the uh, definition. Okay, and then it is also called as Treacherous, treacherous fracture. Treacherous fracture. What does that mean? It's, it means that it is most often missed. Okay, uh, you are uh, the quack uh, might uh, miss the uh, dislocation of the head of the radius, or the patient might uh, miss it and then uh, end up with uh, further complications. So remember, it can also be asked uh, as a treacherous fracture. Okay, so you're done with the first thing that's about the uh, definition. We're done with the definition. So next thing is mechanism of injury. So how does this injury happen? So yeah, you know you know that there is this is Montage fracture. Now you have to know how did this happen? So how did this happen? This happens when the patient falls in an outstretched hand in hyperpronation or hyperextension. So remember outstretched hand in hyperpronation or hyperextension. So when the patient falls in hyperpronation, what happens is there will be load transmitted at the elbow from the wrist and then that will lead to the fracture of the proximal third of the ulna along with the dislocation of the head of the radius. Okay, cool. Now you know the mechanism of the injury. Okay, done with the mecha definition, mechanism of injury. Next comes the classification. What do you know about the classification? Classification here is called as B A D O, Bados classification. Okay, Bados classification. It's uh, remember D B A D O, D for direction. Okay. Here we talk about the anterior and then posterior and then lateral. Okay, in terms of the displacement of the head of the radius. Okay, so uh, type 1, type 1, 2, 3 and then 4. There are 4. Type 1 says that there is fracture of the proximal third of the ulna along with anterior dislocation of the head of the radius and anterior angulation. Okay, so what it says is this is ulna and this is the radius. There is fracture of the proximal third of the ulna and then anterior dislocation of the head of the radius along with this fracture fragment with anterior angulation. Okay, and then comes the posterior type 2 says it's posterior dislocation. There is fracture of the proximal third of the ulna with posterior dislocation of the this is the humerus, this is the head of the radius, posterior dislocation of the head of the radius, and the fracture fragment angulated posteriorly. Okay, and then laterally. What do you say laterally? Obviously, the proximal third of the ulna there is fracture that will angulate laterally and the dislocation of the head of the radius that will angulate laterally. 
okay that is all about it and then what is fourth fourth one is where there is fracture of the proximal third of the ulna and the fracture of the proximal third of the radius with anterior dislocation and anterior angulation okay in rest all the first three there was no fracture of the radius there was only dislocation while in the type 4 there is fracture of both proximal third of the ulna and also the radius and there is anterior dislocation and anterior angulation okay now we are done with the classification thing let's move on to the clinical features how does the patient present you with okay clinical features it's quite simple whenever patient comes to you patient complains of pain at the side and what and patient complains of swelling in the, the side and then patient then you will observe the deformity at the side so it's pain swelling and deformity and decreased range of movements patient not be able to flex extend pronation supination so these are all the classical findings okay pain swelling deformity and the restricted range of movements okay that's all about the clinical features so it's quite simple clinical features it's most often the same whenever there's an injury at the site there will be injury so what happens when there is injury here this can see this is elbow what happens obviously there has to be patient complaints of pain whenever there is an injury patient complaints of pain and then there will be local signs of inflammation then comes the swelling and then other blue bird or all the local findings will be there and then if you want to be more present then you can tell about the local rise of temperature and the tenderness and then uh, comes the uh, range of movements are decreased decreased range of movements and then the deformity okay so this is in general if you want to put it according to the ins uh, findings of examination then you have to be more precise saying that inspectory findings palpatory findings and then movements and measurements so in all the predicts there are three things look feel and move okay so on inspection what do you find on palpation what do you find in movements what do you find in inspection you'll be able to find that there is swelling there is a deformity and then on palpation you'll be able to elicit the local rise of temperature the tenderness at the site and the uh, how is the swelling and then uh, what about the uh, movements is there uh, fluid movements or patient complaints or then you'll be able to elicit the uh, painful range of movements or restricted range of movements so that is all about the clinical features okay now we are done with the clinical features now come next comes the radiography okay radiography radiography so how do you diagnose this you'll have to diagnose it by the clinical examination and another one is the investigation investigations is all about the radiograph so what helps what radiograph do you get you get the radiograph of the elbow either left or right okay and then elbow ap and lateral for example right elbow so you write the right elbow ap lateral also you'll be able to view the elbow from anterior to posterior and then from lateral view so these are the two things that you have to get along with this along with the elbow it you'll have to also get the x-ray of the wrist okay wrist in order to check if there is dislocation of the distal radio ulna joint because what happens is in some cases the elbow along with the elbow fractured the elbow there is the break in the anti-brachial interosseous membrane and the at the wrist there is dislocation or subluxation of the distal radio ulna joint okay see this is the elbow this is proximal radio ulna joint this is distal radio ulna joint so what happens at times is that the fracture at the proximal third of the ulna will be associated with the dislocation of the distal radio ulna joint just in order to rule out the associated injuries you will have to get the x-ray of the wrist and uh, practically this is done when if the patient complains of pain at the wrist but if you want to rule out it is advisable to get the extra of the wrist and you get the extra of the elbow okay so how to diagnose it exactly so on the x-ray you'll be able to cut this is the numerous and then you'll be able to appreciate the dislocation of the head of the radius okay and then this is the uh, ulna so there is a fracture in the proximal third of the ulna there is fracture in the proximal third of the ulna so you'll be able to react and to make out if it's anteriorly displaced or posterior displaced or laterally displaced okay so how to exactly make it uh, to how to exactly know whether it is displaced or is it not displaced for that there is something called as McLaughlin line okay it's written as m e 
एम ए यू जी एच एल आर एन मैक फ्लोरेंस लाइन सम प्रोनाउंसेस आर मैक लॉफ्लेंस एंड सम प्रोनाउंसेस इट इज मैक फ्लोरेंस लाइन टू डू रिकॉर्डिंगली सो व्हाट हियर इट इज इज दैट दिस इज द रेडियस ओके एंड हियर इज द कैपिटुलम ऑफ द ह्यूमरस वेरी टाटाचस ओके सो मैकलोरियंस लाइन इज द लाइन ड्रॉन थ्रू द सेंटर ऑफ द शाफ्ट ऑफ द रेडियस क्रॉसेस द सेंटर ऑफ द कैपिटुलम व्हेन यू ड्रॉ अ लाइन थ्रू द सेंटर ऑफ द शाफ्ट ऑफ द रेडियस विल पास थ्रू द सेंटर ऑफ द कैपिटुलम इररिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द पोजीशन ऑफ द एल्बो ओके सो इट सीज दैट दिस इज द रेडियस ओके ओके हियर इज द कैपिटुलम ओके दिस इज ओके इन फ्लेक्स्ड पोजीशन ओके और इफ यू एक्सटेंड इट द रेडियस विल बी हियर okay and then if you flex it more radius will be here so doesn't matter the position of the elbow you keep it straight you keep it flexed you flex it hyper flexed doesn't matter so what matters is it has to suffice the condition it says that the line drawn to the center of the radius has to pass to the center of the capitulum okay when this does not happen when there is dislocation what happens if this is dislocated anteriorly if this is dislocated anteriorly radius will be here and then the maclaurin sign will go here will go upwards and will not go through the capitulum okay capitulum you remember the head of the radius articulates with the capitulum of the humerus while the ulna articulates with the trochlea okay so i'm talking about that so what happens is this axis will go upwards and the dislocation posterior dislocation goes downwards later dislocation goes laterally so the line won't go through the capitulum okay that is all about the maclaurin sign okay so now we are done with the radiography also let's move on to the next thing that's about the treatment part treatment part to be simple in children it heals by conservative management conservative management that is close reduction and then stabilization cold close reduction and then uh, application of uh, pop and then uh, in adults it has to be done by open reduction and internal fixation okay with respective implants for example with plating of the ulna uh, and then reduction of the dislocated head that is all about the treatment next comes the end thing that's the complication everything will have one or the other complication so what happens common complication whenever there is an injury there will be injury to the neurovascular structures over there so the complications are posterior intraosseous nerve palsy or called as pinch palsy okay and then the complication it can go for mal union or it can go for non union they can be myositis ossificans this also fickens okay and tardy posterior ulna nerve palsy okay so these are some of the complications which will be discussed separately each one is uh, important topic to discuss so to name some of the complications remember there is some 